Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. Today is, well, it's not today technically, but today my husband and I are celebrating our two year wedding anniversary. We actually got married on May 2nd of 2020. Well, we eloped, just the two of us because we had a pandemic wedding, which if you want a story time on that, I have an entire video on it. I can link down below, but essentially we had an elopement and then we had a wedding celebration, but we celebrate our wedding anniversary on the day that we eloped. You following? So anyways, we've just had the most amazing day just hanging out together and relaxing and having a nice breakfast, picking up some coffee and just trying to be together. And he is reading a book and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go do my makeup and relax and do a look that I have been doing recently like every single day and just feeling my absolute best in. And I wanted to share that look with you guys and kind of just chit chat about some of these products that I've been using as it's getting hotter outside. This look is really centered around that bronzy glow that I love so much and I would say that the winning product in this look is this MAC Glow Play blush in the shade Grand. This really has brought the entire look together and has basically inspired my makeup over the past couple weeks. So let's get into it. I can't wait to show you guys all of these products. A lot of these are new, so make sure you stick around until the end. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We talk about makeup, skincare, get ready with me as we do vlogging and I would love to have you join. Okay, so I don't believe I've talked about this product on my YouTube channel yet, but that is the MAC Face and Body Studio Radiance. I'm in shade 2N or N2, and um, I'm obsessed with this. This is such a weird product, and I have just been using it anytime I'm going out in the evening because I found that it's hard to find a skin tint style foundation that doesn't have any SPF in it because I don't want to, I don't want to say I don't want to waste my SPF products for the daytime or the nighttime, but this one has no SPF in it, and it is just as thin as any of my favorite skin tints. Now people say that applying this with your fingers is the best way to apply it. I have not had that experience, but I am trying it again here. I have really liked applying it with a brush, but I'm, I'm trying to get the hype of what people say about applying it with my fingers, so that's what we're doing today. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Okay, so basically people were telling me that you need to rub it between your fingers until it gets tacky. I don't know if I am oily or something, but the product never really gets tacky, and my fingers just like maybe soak it up. So I had been using a sponge or a brush to apply this and I got roasted for it, but I just feel like the coverage looks so much better with a brush. I mean, call me crazy. But anyways, this is like the most beautiful light coverage, skin tint style foundation. I don't know why it's called face and body. I'm thinking that this is used on the body on like movie sets or something because I know MAC is really a professional makeup artist brand, but it's gorgeous. It's super pretty and it has not broken me out at all. But I just feel like right here, I want a little bit more coverage and using my fingers doesn't give me that. So I usually go in with a brush, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm trying to listen to the people. I also have been recommending this as a like substitute for some of your more heavier weight, like dewy foundations and concealers and skin tints that you like to wear in the summer or like to wear in the winter, like the Say Slip Tint or the Tower 28. If those are too like kind of slippy for you in the summer and you're feeling like they're melting off your face, try this because it has a similar finish, but it's not quite as emollient as those skin tints. You know what I mean? But I mean, she is light coverage. Very, very light. This is a huge product though. It has 1.7 fluid ounces. So I like it. I think it's gorgeous. And I've just been drawn to using it, especially in the evenings. And for those places that I want to cover a little bit of redness, especially in the evening when I know I'm going to be out for a long time, I have been obsessing over the Dior Backstage Concealer. I've mentioned this in a few videos, but especially in a Sephora haul, I got this during the sale. This is stunning. I did want to mention a few things since trying it. One is that I love it. It's so pretty and I would say it's like a step up in coverage from what I usually go for. Also, I did not wet a sponge, so I am going to use a brush because who am I? I'm lazy, that's who. I'm using the Tarte Hydro Sealer LOL brush that doesn't exist anymore, but that's fine. It has just a tad bit more coverage than my typical everyday concealer that I love, including the Say Concealer. If you guys haven't seen that full face of me doing Say makeup, 
check that out. I can link that up above and down below. But that concealer is really, really lightweight and absolutely gorgeous. But for nighttime, especially for like, I'm going to have a nice dinner with my husband, we're going to a nicer restaurant, I want this coverage to be a little bit more and last a little bit longer. So I freaking love this. I think it's a great in between, between like basically no coverage and full coverage, which I believe that word is called medium. I believe it's called medium coverage. <laughs> This is very strongly scented. I will say I have a few friends who have really sensitive skin and could not wear this because of that. My skin is super sensitive, but I haven't noticed any issues with this specific concealer. But I also like to use it to go around, like I said, some of those places that I feel like the face and body just missed a little bit and add another layer of coverage without being cakey. It's also really layerable. It does not cake up when you layer it, which I like. And I also feel like you don't really need to set it because although it is dewy, and sort of natural looking. It's not super emollient and wet so that it's gonna pick up every time you touch your face. The only other thing I don't like about it is the packaging. I feel like this is constantly caked in product no matter how many times I clean it and it has to be it has to be stored upright. I brought this on a vacation and it just made a total mess. So that I don't love, but I can live with it because the product is so nice. You guys know me, I am very fast when it comes to this stuff. I don't think I'm going to set anywhere because I like this look. I chose these product products specifically because they don't really need to be set and they're not as emollient as my usual daytime go-tos. So I think I'm just gonna leave a B and go in with the Say Bronzer. This is in the shade Medium Bronze. I talked about this in that Say video and I just love it so much. It's one of my favorite cream bronzers ever, along with like the Milk Cream Bronzer. I love the Tower 28, but this one is way better in my opinion just because it has more of a natural finish and it doesn't have shimmer in it. But the key with this product is finding a really nice fluffy angled bronzer brush. This one's from Sigma. It is not my, not exactly my style, but this is the contour slash blush brush. It's the F53 Air. So this is like a stippling brush basically. But once you put it in there and put it on, it's like already diffused because this brush is perfect for this kind of product. So basically all you have to do is set it down. It's amazing. I mean, that took me like one second. See? It's awesome. So if you are a person who doesn't like blending or doesn't really even know where to start, find a brush like this or even this brush and you will have such an easy time blending your cream products, especially bronzers. Especially because as a bronzer person, in my opinion, and not necessarily a contour person, it doesn't really matter if it's kind of going everywhere because you're just bronzing up your complexion. If you want a contour, this is obviously not the brush for you because it's really big. But if you just wanna kind of bring some color to your face overall, a big brush like this is going to do the trick. And of course I'm going overboard because of course I am. <laughs> the two products that I tend to go overboard on are bronzer and blush. Highlight and not as much bronzer and blush easily. I mean, that took no time at all and it is so diffused. So again, this brush makes such a big difference. Okay, so typically I would go in with my blush next because that's usually the layer that I go. But I have been testing out a new highlighter that I wanted to share with you guys from Lisa Eldridge. This is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. And this is basically like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in so many ways. It has that large doe foot. It comes in like a skin tone color with a glow in it, but they are very different. So this is in the shade Crystal Nebula. And I would say it's like a warm neutral. This is way thinner like way thinner than the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And it blends out really, really thin and it has way more of like a gleamy sheen than the Hollywood Flawless Filter, which has more of like a skin tone sheen. I don't know how to explain it. They are similar, but different. This leaves more of a gleam and the other one leaves more of like a natural highlight. So although I like this, I have been playing around with it because I'm not used to this kind of liquid consistency with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I tried to apply this with a sponge. So I put it down and tried to blend it out with a sponge. It did not work. It really stuck to where it was because I think it's just so liquidy. Whereas with the Flawless Filter, I'm used to being able to 
just blend it out with a sponge. I needed to use a brush and this is the setting brush from Real Techniques. So what I have been doing is actually applying this before I go in with my blush because I've realized that this is a finicky product and I don't want to put a bunch of liquid down on top of my blush and then possibly kind of ruin that look. So I am blending the two together by doing the highlight first and kind of putting it all over the top of my cheekbone and then applying my cream blush, which is not usual for me. And although I like this product, I don't think it's as good as the Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's different. It's a lot, I don't, I don't wanna say shinier, but it just has more of, again, that like, I don't wanna say like synthetic highlight look, but like that highlight that you would expect to see. Whereas I feel like the Hollywood Flawless Filter to me is like, is she wearing a highlight or is she just naturally that beautiful and stunning and like glowy? This to me is like, oh, she's wearing a highlight, but it's more natural. Does that make sense? I don't know. To me, nothing beats the Flawless Filter. It just has no shimmer in it. It's just this beautiful sheen. Whereas this doesn't necessarily have shimmer in it, but it gives a lot more of a like silvery glow. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. This is also my job. So keep in mind, like I'm very particular about products because I've tried so, so many. So you may not even notice a difference between this and the Charlotte Tilbury, but I definitely do. Still really, really pretty. Gives you like super sweaty look. And definitely if you're picking that up, use a brush to apply. And then I'll go in with my cream blush. So this is the Glow Play blushes from MAC. I don't think I've mentioned these on my YouTube channel outside of maybe a short, but these are like malleable blushes that feel like a little pillow. I don't want to say they're cream to powder, but they kind of have that feel to them. This is the shade we're using in Grand. It's so pretty. It's like a brighter version of a terracotta kind of brick road color, which brings a little bit of life to my cheeks. Sometimes I can go overboard with the terracotta and it just ends up looking like I have bronzer all the way across here so this kind of shade that has warmer undertones but is still a little bit brighter really brings the life back to my face and another thing that i've been doing that you've probably seen on tiktok which again i recommend you using a brush for these and not a sponge also i know that looks like a lot but it it'll diffuse because it's such a lightweight blush i have been applying where i typically do which is out here and then I have been bringing it up under my eyes from a TikTok hack that I have seen, which is like, oh, bring your blush up under your eyes and mix it in with your concealer. And I'm like, why don't we just apply our blush up there and call it a day instead of having to like make all this mess with all these additional products, just like bring your blush up there. So that's what I've been doing. And I feel like it gives you a little bit of that, oh, I've been out on the beach look like right here, basically where like the crook of your eye starts and then I've just been taking it up and you can see how that blend looks really good with the blush and the highlighter without it being like a stripe of highlight and a stripe of blush so I think it just depends on the product and I've had to play with it a few times to get this final result and that seems to be the best way to use it of course a little on the apple to the cheek there are tons of colors in this formula tons and tons and tons so if you can find one that you like i highly recommend it because they're just super natural looking and really easy to travel with they're not going to be like liquid all over the place and they work well with other products so i highly highly recommend those if you know me you know like i'm really not a huge eyeshadow person i'm actually planning on doing a one and done eyeshadows video because i feel like i have so many that i like to just throw on including the one we're going to wear today that i don't feel like i need to do like a big Big thing with I don't need to add a bunch of shades to blend it out and then with the highlighter I already have on it just blends in really beautifully so we're talking I'm gonna do some shimmers some mattes some glitters some sheeny ones but today we are using a matte shade this is the about face matte paint in Capulets. This is like a really beautiful sort of more neutral, cool toned brown. And these are amazing. I don't know if you've seen a lot about About Face recently. This is Halsey's makeup brand. I've tried a few things from them before and they actually just sent me all of these. And I'm testing out a few other neutral shades before I jump into some of these like brighter ones. But they're so unique. I feel like you can mix different colors together to get your final result. They dry down matte and powdery, but they start as a liquid and they are so easy to blend so I will show you also the packaging is kind of cool it looks like a little Lego so I take literally the tiniest amount and I just dot it right in the middle of my eye there then I take a fluffy brush this one's from real techniques and then I just literally buff that into the crease and onto the lid which is not gonna give me too much color you can always add but you can't take away so that's why I like to start small and just sort of blend that out towards my eyebrow 
and bam, you've got like a little bit of an eye look. It's not anything crazy, but it adds to like the nighttime vibe of it all. These are gorgeous. They're so easy to use. They kind of remind me of the Rare Beauty liquid eyeshadows, which are also so easy to use. Matte, and they don't budge. They do not budge. Another cool thing about About Face is that they just decided to lower all of their makeup prices. Like, have you ever heard of a brand being like, um, we're just gonna lower our prices? Like, what? I guess Halsey was like, makeup should be assess accessible to everyone, so we are going to make it cheaper which I think is so cool. I don't know when that goes into effect, but I will link these down below for you to go check out. Again, I added an extra layer and even still, it's just like this light, beautiful brown shape. And I feel like the highlighter is already there on my brow bone, so I kind of don't need to add anything else. For mascara, I am going to use the Victoria Beckham Future Lash. This is really old. It's definitely time for me to get a new one, but it's kind of expensive. So I just want to like use it to its last drop. You feel me? <laughs> and I can tell that it's getting old because it's starting to get like really clumpy and flaky, but y'all are. Oh yeah, she big clump. She big clump. She may be past her limit, you guys. I think it's time to maybe get a new one. <sighs> I think I talked about this last video, but this combo has really been doing it for me. This is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. I believe it's in the shade Brunette. And then I finished it off with the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit, which is like a really cool two-sided brush that has like smaller bristles and larger bristles to get all of your little hairs. And I have had my eyebrows dyed before or like tinted when I got my, when I get my eyebrows done and when I get my lashes done. And it doesn't really do anything. I know that everyone has like some blonde hairs in there but as I've said before as a hairy Croatian woman every hair on my face and body is black and thick so it didn't do anything because my eyebrows are already black I just happen to have some sort of sparse areas so I like to lightly fill in with the brow definer and then when I spoolie it out it just adds sort of like a shadow underneath my brows instead of like fully defined brow hairs because I don't really need that. I just need those spaces to be a little bit less stark. I need to do some plucking soon. I really like the shape of them right now, but pluckage is in my future for sure. And here is a close up of the 24 hour brow setter. I kind of apply the goo the goo with this flat side and then I choose which brush side to go in on. Typically I use the larger one because I have more room in between my brows and it helps kind of put them exactly where I want them. But I think if you had thinner brows, the littler one would work really well. But you can use either side. This is also a product that is going to hold them in place. Like 24 hour brow setter is correct. I don't understand why companies come out with products that do not set your brows, they're just like a brow color, like a gel that just has color and does nothing to help them stay in place. I'm like, what was the point of that? A lot of brands have that. I'm like, this is psycho. Is this for people who have like perfect eyebrow hairs? And who are they? And let's get them. <laughs> I over plucked this tail like literally during the pandemic in a psycho like breakdown and it's never grown back properly to be honest. <laughs> tail as old as time, if you will. Get it? A tail, a brow tail. Tail is old as time. My two go-to lips that I have used every day for the past two weeks at least are one of these two and they are both luxury products. So I'm sorry, but I have to tell you about them. First is the Givenchy Rose Perfecto Liquid Balm. Look how pretty this is. Look how pretty this is. I thought this was absolutely stunning and then people started telling me, this looks like the lipstick we used to wear when we were kids. And I was like, why'd you ruin it for me? I was feeling really luxurious about this. And now people are saying it looks like a cream saver. And it does look like a cream saver. This is amazing though. So this is in the color Chilling Brown. It is this beautiful mix between like a liquid lip balm and like a regular balm and a lip gloss without it being sticky. It's like a light amount of color. It is stunning. And I think this is probably what I'm going to use today. And then the other one is a limited edition Dior lip oil that I happen to find in stock on the website, which is crazy because that never happens. And this is in shade Bronze Glow. I have a few TikToks and Instagram reels about this product. This is maybe my favorite one outside of mahogany. Absolutely beautiful it leaves like a reddish bronze look to your lips oh stunning i wore this last night but because it's limited edition and never available let's try the chilling brown of the givenchy because this is still available at sephora
This color is so pretty and so summery. It's kind of like my favorite terracotta blush, but on my mouth. It's beautiful. If you have an olive tone skin, I think this would be like a beautiful brownie nude. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. And I will say like this swirl in here, I don't see it in here, you know what I mean? Like there's no white on this, so I'm kind of feeling like it's just the outside of it, but I don't care because I love it and it's gorgeous. It leaves a little bit of a, not a tingling, but like a cooling sensation, just a slight bit, kind of like the Dior does, but not anything too crazy. And it feels really hydrating too. And you know, I'm not one for like luxury makeup all the time, but when it comes to lip products, like I will splurge. Okay, the very last thing I'm gonna do is, you guessed it, do some fake freckles. So this is from a brand named Salty Face, which I think is such a cute name for a like freckles and fake tan brand. They're out of Canada, which I think is funny I'm like, what the hell do you know about being tan, Canada? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know I have a lot of Canadian followers. Don't come for me. This is similar to the Freck um, sort of liquidy product, but it is much bigger. It has a lot larger of an applicator and it's just a little bit better in tone for my skin. I thought this was gonna be a self tanner freckle, which I thought was like the cutest idea, but it's not. Anyways, this brand makes sort of sensitive skin safe self tanners for the face and body as well. And I am testing that out as well right now. It's kind of like a water. It's completely scentless, which I love like fragrance free, but also even when it develops, it still does not smell like self tanner, which is the bane of my existence. I hate the smell of self tanner. I think it smells like pretzels. Like you smell like a pretzel chip after you do your self tanner. So I hate it. My husband hates the smell of it too. So if I can find one that gives you no scent at all, I will tell you, which it's this one, but it was a tiny bit streaky because it's water. And so I couldn't tell like if it had blended in all the way, you know what I mean? Like I thought that it had blended in and I had gotten everywhere, but then I had this like big patch right here that I, I guess didn't get. So it was fine once I put makeup on, but when I didn't have makeup on, it was kind of obvious. I've also been bringing the freckles a little bit higher on my cheeks. I used to focus it just right here, but you know, fake freckles can look real if you start applying them to all of the places where the sun would naturally hit and where you would get a freckle or a beauty mark. So that's what I started doing, AKA going overboard. And this, my friends, is the finished look. This is what I have been doing for literally the past two weeks, every single time that I wear makeup. I feel so beautiful in this look. It's just a little bit of color on the eyes, a beautiful terracotta to reddish sort of brick round lips and cheeks. It all blends together and it stays on because we're not using really, really slippy emollient products. No setting with powder and I just love it. If you have any questions about this look or any of the products that I used, please let me know down below. I always have everything linked in my description and I will see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye.